Hello. Today's video is going to take a look at position, velocity, and acceleration versus time graphs so that you can observe how accelerated motion and changes in direction are observed in each of these graphs. To do this, we are going to use a simple fan cart, which is just a fan attached to a cart with reasonably low friction wheels. Um, the cart the fan is going to apply a steady acceleration to the cart, which we can adjust simply by changing the number of batteries that's in there. The only variable we will be changing is the acceleration uh, or the thrust of this fan. We won't be changing the mass of the cart as we have these slugs here that we can use to maintain the connection to the fan without altering the mass of the entire fan cart. This fan will be placed on a level track and at one end of that track is a sonic motion detector. The sonic motion detector sends out sound waves and reflects them off of the object to determine actually where the object is located and how fast it's moving. Um, this is not dissimilar to what a radar gun does, except this does it with sound and a radar gun does it with radio waves. So what we see as we look at this motion is that as the cart moves away from the detector, the graph steadily gets more steep, yielding a parabola, indicating that the position of this cart is proportional to t squared. Again, this cart is getting, or this graph is getting more steep as we go, which indicates that the cart is getting faster. If we look at the velocity graph, the velocity graph is actually consistent with this, indicating that the cart is getting faster as we go. And we see a linear function for velocity because the cart is getting steadily faster. If we look at the acceleration graph, it is very wobbly data. This has to do with the way the motion detector collects data um, and the way error is uh, or uncertainty is exacerbated with iterative functions. But if we look at this graph, we can actually draw a line approximately through the center of this data, and we actually do see a positive acceleration, which again indicates that this cart is getting faster as it moves away from the detector. But it's getting consistently faster. The change is a constant, so our acceleration is a constant. And again, uh, for the purposes of comparison, if we look at the data in the beginning and try to draw a line through there, we can see that while it's wobbly data, it is hovering around a zero acceleration. Um, so we can, in fact, look at this data later and say, yes, this object is accelerating. As we look at the next two runs of the graph, we could see and hear that the acceleration of those carts were different. As noted in the video, there were an increasing number of batteries with each run, so the thrust of the fan was greater and thus the cart was able to accelerate more. So if we look at the run with uh, three batteries running the fan, we in fact see again a parabola but now the parabola gets more steep more quickly, which indicates the cart is getting faster at an increased rate. Same with four batteries. We see a parabola again, but it's getting steeper faster. And this is consistent with our velocity graphs where we in fact see that the velocity is getting faster or increasing at a steady but higher rate than before as we add batteries and thus thrust, increasing the acceleration of the fan. Again, this data is very wobbly to look at, but if you spend some time looking at it, and you can actually look at this file, it is linked in uh, the comments below or in the description below. Um, you can look at this graph and actually see that the acceleration of the cart is approximately steady for each of these trials. Whereas if we look at the acceleration at the very beginning for each of these carts, 
those accelerations are again hovering around zero acceleration. Now let's take a look at motion in the other direction when we have the fan pushing the cart towards the detector. I've left the trial up there for four batteries so that we can compare it to um, a trial with four batteries with the thrust and the direction of the cart being completely opposite. Now we again see a parabola, except that now the parabola is upside down from the one we saw previously. When it's moving towards the detector or closer to the detector, we actually have a negative t squared function. But the slope is becoming more steep, indicating that the cart is getting faster as it goes. If we look at the velocity graph, this is again consistent. We can see that the cart is getting faster as it goes. However, now the velocity is entirely in the negative direction or on the negative side of the graph. This indicates, in fact, that the cart is going quote unquote backwards or towards the detector, as opposed to before when the velocity was positive, indicating that the cart was moving away from the detector. So in fact, the direction of your velocity is indicated by the sign of your velocity every single time. And again, we have a linear function, except now the slope is negative. And if we look at our acceleration graph, this is easier to see than in the last round. We do, in fact, see that we have a negative acceleration, indicating that this push is in the opposite direction from what we saw before. Again, if we think about the thrust of the fan and the fact that in both of these trials we were running with four batteries, it's actually kind of remarkable that we can look at this weebly wobbly data for the yellow trial and look at the weebly wobbly data for the green trial and actually see that as we draw an approximate line through it, it's approximately the same size acceleration, just in an opposite direction because the push or the thrust was in an opposite direction. But it is still constant. Now, as we compare all of the trials in the opposite direction, we should see, again, very consistent data. So as we take away batteries, we actually see that the parabola becomes less steep over a longer period of time. So the cart is not getting as fast as quickly as we remove batteries from the fan or lower the acceleration of the fan. Um, likewise, as we move to two batteries but these parabolas are still upside down from the earlier travels because we are in fact moving in an opposite direction and getting closer to the detector. All of this is reflected in the velocity graphs where we in fact see a less steep transition with our velocity. These carts are getting faster, but they're not getting as fast as they were before because we've removed batteries from the fan motor. And if we look at the very difficult to look at acceleration graphs, I can try to jam some lines through there and we can see lessening but still constant accelerations. As long as there's a parabola in your position graph, we will in fact have a constant acceleration and a linear uh, relationship for our velocity. While it's a lot to take a look at all six of these trials put together, there are some interesting trends that can be taken in. So let's get all of those relationships placed back up there. These are for forward and backward thrust um, for four batteries in the fan. These lines going up now are for three batteries in the fan. And finally, two batteries in the fan, where we have the lowest acceleration. So as we look at these graphs, we can see quite consistently that if we have a low slope, we have a low speed every single time. 
no matter what direction we're going, no matter which way the fan is pushing, if we have a low slope, the cart is moving slowly. We see a steep slope and, in, and steeper slopes as we get faster. In the velocity graph, if your velocity is close to the time axis, the object is moving slowly. If the velocity is away from the time axis, the object is moving quickly. Obviously, if velocity is exactly on the time axis, the object is stopped. But if your velocity is close to the time axis, it's a slow object. If your velocity is away from the time axis, it's a fast object. Also, if your velocity is in the first quadrant or on top of your time graph, if your velocity is positive, the object is actually moving in a positive direction. The sign of your velocity exactly matches the direction of motion of the object. So when we see a negative velocity, we actually have an object that is moving in a negative direction. And quite consistently, every single time, uh, if you have a parabola in your position, or your position time graph and a linear function in your velocity time graph, then these actually indicate that you have a consistent change going on or a consistent acceleration speeding up or slowing down the object in question, which is what we've seen in these trials. One of the things that we also see in these trials is that every time our acceleration is positive, our velocity is also positive, and the motion is also away from the detector. This is not always the case. It is, in fact, possible to have motion in one direction and your velocity in one direction, but have your acceleration pushing in the other. So let's take a look at those examples next. What's already shown on this graph is the motion from the previous trials where we saw a parabola in the position time graph as the cart moved away starting from rest it gained speed because the cart was also pushing in the direction of motion. Now, we have a cart moving away from the detector, given an initial push, but it in fact slows down as evidenced in these graphs because the fan is actually pushing opposite to the direction of motion. So your velocity and your acceleration do not have to be in the same direction. When velocity and acceleration are pushing in the same direction, the object speeds up. When velocity and acceleration are in opposite directions, the object will slow down. As we look to, as we look to the other trials, we see this consistent behavior with three batteries and then with two batteries in the fan. We can see that each time the cart is given an initial push, slows to rest. So the cart has a positive velocity as it moves away from the detector, but it consistently has a negative constant acceleration because that acceleration is pushing opposite to the motion. Now, as we look at motion in the opposite direction, the cart is given an initial push towards the detector. We see a consistently negative slope in that parabola where the slope levels off to zero. And in our velocity graph, we see a consistently negative velocity that is losing magnitude or slowing down to rest. And in our acceleration graph, we see a constant positive acceleration because while the cart was moving negatively or towards the detector, the fan was pushing positively against that motion. And as we look at further trials with 
three batteries and then with two batteries, we see this same trend. So the point is, with looking at these trials, that acceleration can be opposite to your motion. You can, in fact, have a negative velocity and a positive acceleration and vice versa. This occurs every time you're heading towards a red light. You're heading towards the red light, but your brakes are pushing your car away from the red light, and the result is that you slow down. What we have here is a cart that's pushed towards the detector, but initially the fan is pushing against its motion, so the cart slows to rest and then changes direction and speeds up again. In our position time graph, we see a parabola and both sides of the parabola, which we haven't seen in the previous trials. In our velocity graph, everything is consistent with what we've discussed, which is that when we have a negative slope in position time graph, we have a negative velocity. When we have a positive slope in the position time graph, we have a positive velocity. Also, as we now know, acceleration does not have to match the direction of our velocity. We have a consistently positive acceleration because we have a consistently positive slope in our velocity time graph. One thing I'd like to point out is that if we draw a tangent line, at the moment the cart comes to rest, the slope of that tangent line is zero. And again, it exactly matches with the moment when the cart is stopped momentarily. It doesn't remain stopped because the fan never shuts off and thus the acceleration never goes away. And this is reflected in the fact that our acceleration graph never drops to zero during this time. I'd also like to point out that if I haphazardly draw a face on this parabola, it kind of looks like a smiley face. And a smiley face or a happy parabola is something that I would call a positive thing, or in the math world, they would call it concave up. This exactly matches with a positive acceleration. So I often tell folks that a happy parabola is a positive or happy acceleration. If we give the cart a heavier push or a stronger push in the negative direction, we see again another happy parabola where the cart moves towards the detector, comes to rest momentarily, and then moves away from the detector. But in the velocity time graph, we see the exact same slope. This is because the thrust of that fan is the same, and so we see the same acceleration the entire time. How does that initial push come into play? If we look at the initial slopes of our position time graphs, we actually see a more steep slope with a harder push. And that directly correlates to the lower slope, lower initial speed, and the higher slope relating to a higher initial speed. In this run, we see the cart moving away from the detector, but the fan is pushing back towards the detector, and so the cart momentarily comes to rest and heads back in the other direction. This is consistent in our velocity time graph, and again, the fan never shuts off, and so we see a constant acceleration. Once again, when the slope of that position time graph hits zero, that directly relates to the moment when the cart stops momentarily. But again, it doesn't remain stopped because the fan's thrust is there the entire time. If I draw a face on this parabola, it kind of looks unhappy, or what they would say in the math world, 
a concave down curve. This unhappy parabola directly relates to a negative acceleration because when you're unhappy, you're kind of negative. Um, so it's just a little tool to help you kind of be able to tell what's going on with acceleration from your position time graph. Again, the negative slope in the velocity graph continues to be consistent with a negative acceleration. Worth noting now is that a negative slope in your velocity graph does not necessarily mean that you are slowing down. We have now seen negative slopes relate to speeding up and negative slopes relate to slowing down. As we look at this object that changed direction and the previous two trials, the object slowed down, came to rest, and sped up again. But the push of the fan did not change, and so the slope of our velocity graph remained negative the entire time. Likewise, our position graph remained unhappy the entire time. Once again, if we have a sharper push or a stronger push to get the motion going, we see a larger parabola, but the acceleration is the same, the rate of change in velocity is the same. 